Hi guys and welcome back to OG Cars and in today's video you join us inside for a bit of an unboxing but it's not an unboxing because we've already opened it to make sure that it's okay um, but when we did the Fiat Panda video where we introduced you to Penny who's my Fiat Panda 169 I said that the one thing I wanted to upgrade was the infotainment because it's basically exactly the same as it was when it was released in 2003 and that's the only thing that in my opinion slightly lets the car down and quite a few of you in the comments expressed an interest in that now bear with us because we're going to film ourselves doing this and the last time i did this was in my panda 100 horsepower and it was not an, a car play one this is a car play one so we're going to be sort of doing it as we go and seeing how it goes but a lot of it should just be plug and play so it's almost a how to but maybe it'll become a how not to do it yeah pretty much. Owen is obviously here for support because I could get stuff wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, we <laughs> don't really know what we're doing, so it's going to be a little bit of fun, right? But let's go for it. This is the fascia. Um, the reason I went with this radio in particular is because it actually came with the fascia instead of having to buy it separately. So this one was the same price as some without the fascia. Who's the fascia? Which is really useful. And so where did you get this from? Um, I, I did get it from AliExpress, so that's the reason why we opened it beforehand because we didn't really know what it was going to be like and if it wasn't great, it's free to return it. So hopefully we can get this installed and so long as it's all working okay, we're really happy. And then, there's something in there which is for us to go to fabric, so we'll ignore that. Um, this is the radio. So, obviously the screen is going to be Apple CarPlay, there's a few little buttons on the side which we can show you a bit closer at. And then we've plugged everything into the back and that probably looks like horror to some of you. It looks like horror to us as well because the only thing I will say about this radio is it came with no instructions. So we're guessing, but <laughs> that said, this was already plugged in here and that comes through to this, which I assume is the conversion for the original wiring which is in the car. There's a lot of wires that come off here. I'm not sure if we need them because they're sort of like these ports and... They I'm have got funny, labels on them and it's like subwoofer and audio stuff and I don't have any of that in that car so it's fine. Exactly. And then there's uh, this item here which is attached to the VAT adapter and then there's basically a separate USB section. There were a couple of these, I've just plugged one of them in to this section on the side at the top here just because what we're probably going to do is just try and dangle it down the back and then you've got access to a USB if you want one. It's not really a need. Um, but there is also a microphone isn't there? That's what we were wondering yeah. where I'm... we're going to put it. I think we can gather, obviously this is, well we know this is the microphone so we'll try and fit that somewhere, um, but one of these I think is something to do with the Apple CarPlay and the only reason I say that is because when I was looking at other options it came up that you had to buy a separate dongle for the Apple CarPlay because you buy it cheaper by the dongle separately, so we're just going to see how it goes. Um, there are also some brackets in there and it came with some plastic tools which is great you basically got everything you need to do it the only thing it didn't come with was radio keys so one just fell out the board we bought some we have some in the house and we both sat here for the last few days going where are they and um, when i was on my way home from work i went past the halford so i went and got some yeah. so hopefully we should be able to do this i did this on my own years ago um but i didn't do it 100 percent right and i can't even remember why but something on it didn't work properly so what we're going to do is we're going to give this a go now with the two of us and we're going to see how it goes. Okay, so here's the auto leads tools and we're going to give it a little go. So you've got four ports or whatever you want to call them. And obviously these prongs just go in each side. And um, I've not done this for a long time, so we're going to find out how it goes. Right. Push them all the way in, both sides. Now, is it just going to come out? Probably not. There were trim tools, which I'm going to find. Here's some I made earlier. I do have better ones than this in the garage. So here we are. I'd also like to point out that Owen's doing this because I tried and failed. So. You're not meant to say that. You're meant to say this is really easy and everyone should do it. Okay, so that's that side out. I've just levered it up slightly there. Hopefully it stays there, you never know. Um, right, let's try and push in this side. Sometimes they need a jiggle. Okay, so that was totally painless. 
not difficult whatsoever. Okay, so if you're wondering why it cut off, then it's because I had a bit of a problem. Now, you can see here, there's two plastic little bits in there and they're actually broken off from the back of the face here um, on either side. So obviously you can get those out and um, glue them back in. Obviously it just fits back in there. Um, and this connector just, just meets that. So that's all that is anyway. Um, but yeah, annoyingly they did break. Um, I say did break, I think this one was already broken. So it was just hanging on there. And then because that one was coming out at such an angle, it was very difficult. You can see here, these are meant to obviously push these two tabs in there, which pushes all of it in slightly. And those are just meant to come out. So obviously it didn't quite work out. And that's, you know what, that's the reality of this video because I, want, I kind of wanted this to just be a how-to and everything just came apart and everything just went in. But this is the reality. Things like this do happen and that's just the way it is. For this next bit, Basically, we want to take the rest of the internals of the radio out, so all the actual gubbins. We've got four crosshead screws and we've got a five mil Allen key um, bolt. So I've got a five mil, this is probably a little bit overkill, but I did try an Allen key and it was a little bit too tight. So I've got a five mil um, Allen end in basically an adapter on my big ratchet. So basically, we're just going to undo that first. I like that Mr. Duck is very prominent around this video. There we are, one Allen bolt that holds that in. So we'll just put that somewhere else so we can lose it later. And now we've got four of those cross heads. Oh. There's one thing while Owen is unscrewing the radio. Yes, this is a real inflatable rubber ring that Mr. Duck is having. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Four screws and the Allen key bolt. Does it come out? Yes, it does. So now we're just going to fish it out. And of course, I can't really see. But there we are. There's the aerial. It comes out like that. And then we've got two tabs which you press down for these pin connectors. Oh, I've turned the hazards on. <laughs> That's going to happen in real life as well, everyone. So we'll leave that in. In reality, uh, Owen should have sat on the driver's side. Oh, <laughs> did one of the black plastic clips just fall out? I don't it, know. It did, yeah, that's what was meant. Oh, wait, no, that's, what is that? I don't know, we'll come We'll come back to that one. Um, right, let's, let's try again, shall we? Um, cool, so we want the two big ones out here. Oh, for... That's a really good shot of you hugging the radio. Can you cut that bit? <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to turn the hazards off again, and there's basically this multicolour bit at the bottom. You've got one tab there, which I've just done, and there's one on the other side, and they will jiggle out like so. And then these two, which I've been fighting with, and I hope G's going to cut the video down so it doesn't look terrible. Um, you just you just push them, and it just it just comes out. It just it just <laughs> you just push them. And you just, you just put it. <laughs> what was it? Doing? What are you doing? I want this to look smooth and professional. <laughs> and that is sticky and horrible. This is a nightmare. Oh god, I'm getting backache now as well. Oh god, I'm getting old, everyone. You just, you just push it, everyone. You just push it down. There we are. Oh yeah. You just have to push it more than it allows you to with a screwdriver. By the way, don't do that. Um, but yes, there we are. That was nice and easy. Okay, so there's this little GPS uh, thing, which has like an aerial thing on the side. Let's just see what happens, shall we? Let's just see what happens. So, we've got this section here. Spaghetti junction over here. Right, obviously we will need to put the mount on eventually. Right, so that goes that way around. It'll never come out of there either, will it? Right, let's put it up there. That should go in like that. Oh, that's going to be tight if it goes in there. Oh. There we go. And then this one goes in any direction. I think this is just here to prop it up and put it somewhere. But there's no wires out the other side, so it makes me think it's just there for show, which seems a bit odd. Oh, you know what? If I hit that hazard like one more time, the front of the window. All right. It doesn't even fit in there properly, it just literally sits in there. It's there. Right, that's in there, so that's 
done, <laughs> in inverted commas. I don't know if I really need... Oh, that's got the microphone on it, so we'll keep that. That's our USB. Great. Got the GPS thing. Should we just turn it on and see what happens? Because yeah. We're just interested in what we've got. Let's try that. Okay, so you join us the day after because, to be fair, it was getting a little bit dark a little bit too quickly. And also, we made a mistake. Uh, we turned the ignition on and it came up with, like, this camera with a warning sign. And we were like, what's that? Because G said this version of the radio didn't come with the reverse camera. We didn't want that. Um, it's only a small car, so we don't really need it anyway. Obviously, you can buy them with that and fit it and run the wire through into the back of here. Um, but it was coming up and we thought, oh, maybe we've bought the wrong radio. We just went inside and have a, had a think about it. We've come out this morning. And um, so let's just say the gear stick was there in, in reverse. Um, G was looking at it going, how do I get it? That you couldn't get it off the screen for the error message. And G was like, how, how do we get it off? And G just had this idea to just... And then, yeah, the error message went away. Quite funny. But basically, yes, if you buy one without a camera, it, I would say it is kind of a bad design that if you're in reverse it still says oh you've got no camera and that's all it will show you until you come out of reverse i mean as long as you're not driving in reverse all the time i suppose it's not going to be that much of an issue so now um let's turn the ignition on and just check when we started the car as well um and there we are we've got a screen i don't know how well you can see it but um no it's not let me do anything just please connect bluetooth first Cool. Well, assumably, you know, let's do... Ah! Music. I don't know if it'll let us do anything yet. Oh. And amazingly now, the phone is tethered and playing off YouTube. It's not playing Kids in America, because obviously we get a copyright strike. So it's playing some uh, royalty-free music off of YouTube. But it works. You can see messages, you can see your music, you can see your maps. So it's connected and works. This is good news. This means we can actually fit it now. So let's go and find the little mounts for the side and see if we can get this in without botching that as well. Okay, so I've just put in the aerial adapter. Um, it just joins the Panda star wiring into a more conventional style, style um, aerial pin, basically. So I've just connected all that up. And uh, now we've just, we just want to route a few wires and these mounts seem to be a little bit too wide, which is a bit odd um, on the AliExpress kit. They seem to be too wide. There's a lot of adjustment in them, but they're just too wide to fit in. So because they're too wide, I'm just going to cut down the sides and the screws will still hold them in perfectly fine. So I'm going to give that a go now. I'll get the angle grinder out, just chop the sides off and then put the screws in the side of here, which obviously one is already. So I'll just put the other one in and we'll slot it in and we'll just screw the radio into there with all the wiring in place. Okay, so I've just come back with some cut down mounts. So we're going to screw those onto the side in a second and uh, yeah, just slide it in and screw them in there. G has just done the wiring while I was out. So she's fed down a USB, which basically there's a hole at the back left here and um, there's a USB on the left side. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there's a USB there. There's also this, which is, I believe, something. GPS? Track I think it's it. GPS so, or the antenna. We can't really Something to do with something. And then the other wire is for the microphone, which we've managed to put here. We've tucked it all in. We've actually moved that trim up, um, put the wire under, put the trim back in and just fed the cable. So that wiring's done. Let's get the radio in. Okay, and there we have it. So we had to do a bit of adjustment and we've got it screwed in on the bottom each side, basically. We had to bend the mount slightly as well and just really adjust it to get it to fit fairly well in the middle. The fascia plate is in there. It's not perfectly flush, but the thing is, I think it's just a bit of a cheaper kit and therefore it doesn't fit perfectly. But actually, it does look quite good. If you have a look, it's in there. It looks, you know, it looks good and it performs as it should as well for turning the ignition on then with any luck. There we are. We've got the radio up and showing. So... You know, it is a decent upgrade, so uh, I'll let G talk about why she's done the upgrade now. Apologies for the reflection, it's actually uh, quite a nice day today, but this is literally why I did it, because when I was looking at a new car, I was looking at newer, newer cars, because I wanted a bit of infotainment, so when I'm driving, I like my music, I like to be able to have my maps because of my job, and if I've got car pull on here, you know, I'm on music now, I can pop over into my maps, I can make phone calls this just makes my life so much easier so i'm really happy with this to be fair for the price i paid i'm really happy with this and whilst it has annoyed us both fitting it <laughs> i think now it's in it's a really good upgrade and it sort of modernizes mm. the car yeah i think basically you could spend like 400 quid on a really nice sony double din get a proper cage you put in there a really you know quite expensive face here and it would look perfect but this yeah you can see a couple of slight gaps and yes the interface isn't going to be quite as good as a sony one but considering you pay like a quarter of the price sometimes you know that's that's just the way to do it and if it works it works but it's going to do exactly what you want it to do 
And there we have it. That is how not to install an AliExpress radio in a uh, Fiat Panda 169. If you're looking at getting a doubled in radio like this, I will tag an actual guide as to how to fit a proper radio in there. Admittedly, I believe the guide that's on YouTube and is a really good guide to be fair, is a, a Sony double in, so it's gonna cost you more. If you want to do it cheap, get the AliExpress one. You're gonna have to adjust the mounts to get it to fit. But if you want it just to work and it for it to be cheaper, go for it, adjust it. It'll annoy you a little bit when you're putting the facer in, but it'll all go together and it'll do the job you want it to do. So thanks very much for watching this video, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you all in the next one.